Crushing the butt of his cigarette beneath his sandaled foot, Johnny stood up. He ran his hand over his dark, sparse beard, the beard of a boy, not a man, and stared into the fog. If the day had been clear, he would have been able to see the ocean from here, beyond a few of the other cabins, beyond where the cliffs plummeted down to the sea. Today, though, his gaze rested on nothing more than drifting clouds of cotton. He became aware of the silence almost instantly. The wailing and moaning had stopped, and he turned toward the cabin door. Was it finally over? Shouldn't the baby cry or something? He heard the rapid pounding of footsteps across the splintery living room floor of the cabin, and Felicia pushed open the screen door. Her face was flushed, and she looked like a wild woman. Get help, Johnny, she said. The baby's not breathing. Get that woman who came last night, Penny's friend, Carlin. She's a doctor. He turned and ran in the direction of Cornflower, Penny's cabin, hoping he'd be able to find it quickly in the fog. He'd managed to find her cabin in the middle of the night several times during the past couple of months, when Ellen had encouraged him to go to the older woman for sex, since she had not felt up to it. And, sure enough, his feet seemed to know the way. He remembered seeing the new woman in the dining room the night before, but he hadn't known her name. She was an old friend of Penny's, someone had told him, just here for a visit. He'd found himself staring at her. She was a small and slender woman with large blue eyes and shoulder-length blonde hair that framed her face in an uncombed, unkempt, and utterly appealing way. She was probably in her mid-thirties, nearly his mother's age. But she didn't look like anyone's mother. Nor did she look like a doctor. He burst into the living room of the cabin to find Penny and Carlin sitting on opposite ends of the old sofa, sewing. They looked up at the sudden intrusion, hands and threaded needles frozen in midair. The baby's not breathing, he said. In an instant, Carlin dropped her sewing and ran toward the door. He and Penny followed close behind. Which way? Carlin called as she stepped into the fog. Johnny grabbed her arm and ran with her toward Rainbow, but he stopped short at the front steps of the cabin. In there, he said, pointing. Carlin wrapped her hand around his wrist and nearly dragged him up the steps with her. Your girlfriend will need you, she said, and he knew she was giving him no choice. <laughs>